There are companies today that are household names for every generation that likely were not just a few years ago. Airbnb and Uber are just two examples. These companies didn't simply harness digital transformation. Rather, they built the transformation right into their business models by connecting the digital and physical world seamlessly. From entrepreneurs to execs to those rising in the corporate ranks, there's a lesson here for all of us. Just as the hotel and the taxi industries were ripe for disruption due to antiquated systems, so too is nearly every industry. And it's an opportunity Ronan Samuel saw specifically in fashion. When you look at the car industry, the brands totally changed in the last five years or 10 years. We're talking about Tesla, but you're also talking about Uber. So Uber become a major brand in, in the transportation industry. This is where I see Cornet. I see Cornet becoming the number one brand in fashion tech by really connecting the virtual world to the physical world. Ronan is the CEO of Cornet Digital, a digital printing and fashion tech company that offers individualized on-demand fashion. So many companies can claim to be the Uber of their respective industry. But we'd argue Ronan is not only building the Uber of fashion, he's actually creating something even better. Imagine if Uber made sure there was never an extra car on the road, that at any given moment, there was only exactly how many the demand required, no more, no less. And not just that, but what if when your car showed up, it was customized to you, from the music, to the lighting, down to the scent of the air freshener. Intrigued yet? At Cornet, Ronan is combining these concepts of personalization and customization with a mission of sustainability and efficiency. The outcome is a business model that both saves its bottom line and saves the planet in the process. So how exactly is Cornet leveraging these ideas to transform the fashion industry? And in what ways is the company bridging the physical and virtual worlds to create what's never before been created? Find out on this episode of Business X Factors. I'm Jeremy Bergeron, the Vice President of Media Strategy at Mission.org. Welcome to Business X Factors. Each week, we'll take a look at the secret sauce that takes companies to some of the highest levels of success and then unpack how they got there. We'll explore how these organizations are run and what's so special about the people, culture, and processes that make it all happen. What is technology for? Our friends at Highland believe technology is for transforming the way you work, for delivering complete information when and where you need it so you can be more agile, more empowered, more connected through each interaction and in every relationship. Highland believes in technology thoughtfully designed to create better customer experiences. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D.com slash insights. An important value was imbued to Ronan during his upbringing that has remained with him his entire life and continues to serve him very well. I think that what I've learned from my parents is working hard. They were really working hard every day and very consistent. And I learned it from them. I think that they encouraged me to achieve more. They always challenged me to reach to a higher, higher place. Aptly, Ronan's career first took off soaring among the clouds in the Israeli Air Force, where he initially served eight years and then spent an additional 10 years in the reserves. To be a, a fighter pilot in, in the Israeli Air Force, you need really to aim high. So the standard is very high. You are part of a bunch of, of very uh, talented people. You need really to aim to excel all the time. One of the things that's going on in the Israeli Air Force, we are, which we are very proud of, is always briefing and debriefing. So you're planning ahead and debrief. So I was doing like thousands of hours of flights. 
and the average time flight is one hour, two hours. After every flight, you take like at least the same amount of time to debrief what you have done. And many flights are the same flight, but you always need to find three things that you can do better and to improve. And this process of really looking to areas that you can do better, I think I took with me also to the business life. So being transparent, being open in front of everyone, talking about the mistakes that you have done, uh, things that you can improve, is really, really crucial in the business world and in any company. For Ronan, his military background has certainly informed his business acumen and strategic process for improving a company. And it seems that the mandatory military experience required in Israel could be acting as a force multiplier for business success. There's a lot of innovation in Israel, and, and uh, we're starting to have a lot of successes in different uh, parts of the tech industry. It could be in pharmaceutical, telecommunication, of course, and definitely printing, really the digital printing basis in Israel. I, I would say that major influence on innovation is coming from actually the military. In Israel, every person has to go to the army when he's 18 years old. Some of them going uh, for two years, some of them going for five years. You are very young at this age uh, to start managing people, commanding people, being exposed to technology, very sophisticated technology, being exposed to pressure, create some kind of a unique capabilities and DNA but when you're going out of the army, not only you're coming much more mature, exposed, but you also want to, many people want to unleash themselves because you were part of for three years or five years, you were close in, in a specific area in the army. And for the first time, people can really take all the knowledge and go to the globe and, and show it. It's certain that being in the military played a big role in Ronan's own career development, but he wanted to broaden his horizons even further. So he turned to an MBA program to help him do just that. So choosing uh, MBA and specifically in Kellogg, the main uh, rationale behind it, I felt that I need to go beyond the Israeli market. I, I wanted to expose myself to outside of the world. There's a much bigger world than Israel. Kellogg, the program is partially in the U.S., in Chicago, partially was in Hong Kong, partially was in Israel. So it was a great program that uh, allowed me to interact with different cultures, different nationalities, and to learn from other business people on, the, on their success, on what I can do better. And you will see it later on also in my career but I choose to work in, in Asia and later on in EMEA. I really wanted to learn the bigger world and to be exposed. And I think that this is one of the strengths that I'm bringing with me today to my current role. Ronan's civilian career blossomed at a printing company in Israel called Indigo that was then later acquired by Hewlett Packard. So what was the original attraction to, to digital printing with Indigo? The, the initial attraction, Indigo in those days was really pioneering in changing the world from analog printing, which was on offset, uh, to digital printing using digital technology and, it, and actually enabling more customization, personalization on product. The product could be a, a, a book that you can go online and order a book and, and it was printed to you uh, versus being on the shelf. It could be a photo album, but it could be also brochure or, or business card. So uh, personalization in those days started to come into the printing industry. Of course, a web to print is something that was emerged during uh, 2000, which there was a need for digital solution on demand production. And, and this is where Indigo and HP were focusing on. With HP, Ronan was able to relocate first to Singapore and then to Barcelona. And it was those experiences in Asia that first opened him up to seeing the sustainability issues in the garment industry firsthand. If waste and pollution in the garment industry is the adversary, then this is the time period in Ronan's life when he saw glimpses of the enemy. 
the time in Asia Pacific, I was uh, in the printing industry, in the graphic arts. Graphic arts is mainly printing on paper, plastics. It's mainly for the book market, for the packaging market. So it, it wasn't about garment. Although I was exposed, of course, to the garment market in China, in Bangladesh, in India, I saw the mass production going on in, in those places, the, the, the sustainability issue. My main learning it, it, it came when I moved to Kunit three and a half years ago, and then I really started to, to deep dive into this market. What types of sustainability issues is Ronan talking about? According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the equivalent of a truckload of clothes are buried in a landfill or burnt every second. And the fashion industry also contributes to plastic microfibers that are getting into our oceans and definitely polluting them. Ronan knew there was an opportunity to drive change, and it was at that point he learned about Cornet. Ronan had interactions with Cornet for some time prior to joining the team. This gave him occasion to really assess the virtues of the company. I started to uh, interact with, uh, with Cornet and the CEO of Cornet about five, six years back. I've seen a great company with excellent technology. Actually, I was surprised by the innovation on the technology side, the market leadership. When I interacted with, uh, with Cornet in those days, I found out, wow, they, they have big customers like Amazon, Fanatics. So I was very impressed. I understood that there's something that with this technology, they are really solving a, a, a big problem in the, into the market. And I saw a company that really has a very strong roadmap moving forward. When I joined Cornet, it was focused really on transforming the analog market into digital. Again, very similar play to what I've done in the, the earliest days on the graphic arts with Indigo and, and Hewlett Packard. Ronan's experience in the print-on-demand world gave him an awareness that Cornet had the potential to corner an entirely new market. I understood that there's much, much bigger play. The much bigger play is not only doing it with technologies that enable you to do on-demand, short-run personalization, customization, but the entire market, the entire uh, apparel, uh, textile, fashion market is very conservative. It actually didn't change for the last 100 years. When we look at this market, the market from design of a product to a product of the shelf is 18 months. And it doesn't fit for today consumers' need. And I understood that Cornet can play a much bigger role in changing the industry to become much more sustainable, on-demand, enabling the creativity that both the consumer and the designers need. Early on, as CEO of Cornet, Ronan was laser-focused on a mission to figure out the potential scope of this new, personalized, on-demand fashion market. So the first uh, three months, I spent two things. One, visiting customers, really being in the field. The second thing is building business model. I just wanted to understand what is the potential of the market, what is the potential of the product we are selling, understanding the roadmap, understanding the growth trajectory. And once I understood that this is much bigger play that we can take, I had a, a kind of a, a discussion with, with my management team. How do we take it to the market? Many companies deciding, okay, we, we have a very aggressive goal, but we are not sharing it. Many as a public company, it's very risky to come to the market and say, hey, I'm going to be a $500 million company in five years' time. The market wants to, to see that you can execute. It's going back to believing. And to show that you believe, you have to state it. And if you don't state it internally and to your management team and to the last employee and you're not stating it outside, the chances that you're going to deliver it are slim. Only when you state it and you commit it to it, you have a better chance to meet it. Doesn't mean that you will meet it, but you have a better chance. Today, I can tell you, we're still not five years from the moment we, we, we shared it. Um, but a few months back, we already announced that we are going to be a $1 billion in 2026, and actually we are going to bring the $500 million ahead of the time of the five years. 
the growth trajectory actually accelerates much faster than we anticipated with the most aggressive plan, uh, you know, three and a half years ago. Ronan and Cornet had a sense that the current fashion market is not providing the on-demand creative customization that the younger generation is demanding. Kids today need innovation to save them from tired fashion industry processes and products. The consumer of today and the consumer three and a half years ago are, are totally different. And we saw the changes. Z generation would like to be unique. Each one of them, they don't want to have the same product. They would like to express themselves. They have specific needs. They would like to customize product. Or they would like to get the products immediately. Immediate gratification is super, super important. How did you know that though? How did you know that change was coming? Because you nailed it. That's exactly where we're at. But how did you, what were you considering to say, hey, this is what the consumer wants now? First of all, we all live in this world, so we, we feel, we see it. So we have children. I saw in my children the way they are starting to consume products. So they started to go online. And this is the second thing that happening. So today, 30% of everything that people are consuming is through e-commerce. And, and the forecast that it, by 2025, it will be 60%. And three and a half years ago, it was, it was about 10%. What we understood that the e-commerce of today is still not where it needs to be. It's not a smart e-commerce. When you're going today to e-commerce, for example, Nike.com, and you want to order a T-shirt, sometimes the T-shirt does not exist anymore. They are sold out or they don't have the size or they don't have the color, which means that the e-commerce is actually a mirror of what they have in the inventory or what they have on the shelf. They're just using it as another medium to, to try to get directly to the consumer, not through the retail, but through the e-commerce. The e-commerce of today and tomorrow will be different. It will create a different experience. Actually, the e-commerce of tomorrow will enable you endless products. It's a virtual e-commerce. You don't need to have a physical product behind it. You can have endless uh, design, endless creativity that you would like to choose. You choose a product and only after you choose, then the product being produced and being shipped to you. And this is the vision that we saw in those days and we build the strategy of Cornit 4.0 and Cornit X going to the market and changing the entire supply chain of this industry and making it greener, but more relevant to the consumer. The kids want fashion customization and Cornet and Ronan understand that. To be honest, it's not just the kids. Most of us these days want that sort of personalized creative freedom in our clothing choices. Although there's a lot of earning potential on the cutting room table, for Cornet, it's not only about pursuing a large market to get with the times and meet consumer demands. Find out after the break what Cornet's strategy is to help fashionably sustain the planet. When I need help, I want someone who understands where I am now and where I'm coming from, but with a broader perspective. The folks at Highland are like that. Highland is a true partner to more than half of Fortune 100 companies, a partner that understands your industry and offers expertly tailored solutions that evolve with you. With Highland, you gain a complete view of information across your organization along with the agility to compete at the top of your game and deliver better customer experiences. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D.com slash insights. Cornet's mission to promote sustainable fashion is born from a factual analysis of the amount of damage the current textile production model is doing to the planet. 
textile market, the fashion market, is the second most polluted industry in the world. I knew it from the Asia Pacific that it's it's very polluting industry, but I didn't understand that it's the second most polluted industry. The first most polluted industry is, of course, the oil uh, industry. The second is the textile. And by that, I understood that there is a potential here to really change and and create an impact on on, on the globe. Just to give you an example of of the the, um, amount of the negative impact of the world, 30% of everything that's being produced today is actually never being sold. Wow. It's a waste. And if you calculate the impact of this waste to create the 30%, you are using 28 trillion liters of water. The 28 trillion liters of water is like the entire population of the U.S. drinking water for 72 years. This is the amount of water you are throwing away every year. But on top of that, there's there's pollution that creates into uh, polluting uh, rivers. Of course, greenhouse gases that uh, this industry is uh, is, uh, generating. The play that Cornet is now taking is really changing this industry to become much more sustainable, reducing the waste, reducing the amount of water that's being used, and making also the work environment much more sustainable than it used to be. The textile and fashion industries have not only been wasteful, environmentally polluting, and difficult for workers, they've also not been able to meet consumer demand. Although fast fashion has turned around products more quickly, it's only exacerbated environmental problems and waste. A recent CBS News story explained how fast fashion is leading to a surplus of used clothes being sold to what are considered salvage markets. The entire population of Ghana is 30 million, but 15 million pieces of used clothes are sent to Ghana's Kamanto market each week. Of course, all these clothes cannot be repurposed, and as a result, 40% of the clothing bales delivered to Ghana are estimated to make their way to landfills. Supply chain in general, in the textile industry, in the fashion industry, was broken for many years. Generating a new product that takes you 18 months from designing a product or, or on delivering it on the shelf, it's just unheard of. It doesn't make sense for today's world. And there were a few companies like Zara that managed to reduce the time to market. They managed to reduce it even to a few weeks uh, from a design of product, but still, uh, they couldn't react fast to the change of trends and moving into really customization. Fast fashion actually created even more pollution and more waste. You need to look at this market in two areas. One, as a replacement, are we replacing the old way of production, meaning the big machine using our digital, or are we enabling a new products? And the play that we are doing today, the main play that we're doing today is actually enabling new products, bringing value, creating value. It's not about replacing the old process on doing it in a digital way. It's really creating new product. What does it mean, new product? If you go online and you don't need to have an inventory, this is really a new product. If you can customize your T-shirt, and choose any design you like from a catalog of, of design. This is new category that was not exist, that we you can do it only without technology, with digital technology. So we are very much focusing on that. On top of that, of course, the old way of production is very polluting, both in water consumption, but also in the chemicals that are being used. We have developed uh, a new type of process with pigment ink, that actually doesn't consume water at all and is fully sustainable, fully green. And the aim is gradually really to replace the old technology with a sustainable technology that Cornet developed. Ronan has a strategy to position Cornet for a fashion revolution that also really helps our planet. And just like he decided to pursue an MBA to experience more of the world, Ronan looks for inspiration outside of the fashion industry. Not everything we invented ourselves. You have to learn from different markets and ask yourself, how does it impact our market? We looked at the book market. 25 years ago, Amazon decided to move this book market into the digital world. 
for the first time, you could go online and order any type of book, meaning even books from 10 years ago, 100 years ago. They didn't have it on the shelf. You order it and they print it to you and send it to your home. But this was not the revolution. This was just the first step. The real revolution is that now everyone can be, become a writer and everybody is uh, writing a book. You don't need to be a big publisher to write a book. So it's unleashing creativity and creating totally a, a new market, a long tail of endless type of book. Now, you publish them on, on virtually, but you uh, produce them only when you get an order. We took this market and we said, actually, the same thing is now going to happen in the fashion world, once you are unleashing the creativity and you're moving online and we are enabling anyone to create what they want and you enable pe people to produce to an order versus producing to a focus, you are changing the dynamic. And now every creator can become a brand. You don't need to be a big brand in order to sell. Today, I can open a shop in five minutes in Shopify and try to create design and sell it. What is the problem? The problem is when someone is ordering the product for me. And I don't have the inventory, I don't know how to produce it, and I don't know how to deliver it to you within 24 hours. This is exactly what Kornit is delivering. This is Kornit X, connecting the virtual world to the physical world. This is all about Kornit X, all about our strategy. There's an old Latin phrase that states, fortune favors the bold. For Ronan, fashion and fortune favor the bold. If a company believes in itself, it's about getting up on the catwalk and strutting its values with total confidence. Bold is not only developing the next level of technology. Bold is not only about putting a high financial targets. Bold is not about the day-to-day -day activities in the marketing you can be bold as well. And what we have established at LA Fashion Week and the Cornet LA Fashion Week, Cornet Tel Aviv Fashion Week, next year will be in, in London and other places, is to create an alternative fashion week, which shows that you can do on-demand production, actually from uh, ideas to a uh, catwalk or runway. So on demand was very important. The second message is sustainability, doing it in a green way without waste. We're using the uh, Kuni technology. And we took the bold size. We, we said, okay, we are going to show the world that you can do it in a full diversity and inclusive way. Actually, on the runway, there were women more 83 years old. They were all gender, all sizes, beautiful people. And this is a very important message to take to the fashion world. You can be beautiful no matter what your color, what your size, what your age. And you can wear anything you like. You can express yourself um, and you can get it in a sustainable way. Fashion week all across the world. In those fashion week, we're actually inviting designers, we're inviting influencers, we're inv inviting brands, uh, we're inviting fulfillers to see. And I can tell you the feedback we are receiving is unbelievable. They didn't imagine that actually today they can unleash creativity, they can do it on demand without uh, impacting in, uh, in a negative way the world and doing it just in time using this technology. Does this mean I, Jeremy, get to have a fashion avatar? Because it is absolutely time for some custom virtual mission swag ready to be made real at the press of a button. In five years from now, or less than that, the way you are going to choose your clothing is that you will have an avatar. We all talk about metaverse. It will be metaverse. Your avatar will be your sizes, your height, everything. He's actually going to choose for you. You're going tonight to a party. We also know what is your friends going to wear. And if you would like to be unique, why don't you wear red? Because most of them will red. We wear black and, 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 and blue. So this is the place that the world is moving. And Kornit will move more and more into also 
the, the, the virtual place in order really to connect and to bring value to the consumer, to the brands, to the designer, connecting the virtual world into the physical world. Cornet has positioned itself perfectly at the intersection of the physical and the digital. It's from that vantage point that Ronin has been able to connect the dots between sustainability, manufacturing, personalization, and future technologies. His perspective was won by paying attention. On one hand, Ronin did have exposure to the excesses of textile pollution in Asia. On the other, he lives in this world as we all do, and environmental concerns are everywhere. He made the very same point about having a pulse on the creative fashion needs of the next generation. To see what the young people care about, all one has to do is look around. A person or company doesn't have to be a profound experience in order to be sensitive to the realities of the world. Ronan saw these realities for what they were and dared to envision new realities. Whether it's the latest fashion or a sustainable world we can pass on to the next generation, it all starts with a constructive dream, a strategy to achieve it, and the guts required to get up on the runway and walk. I don't know about you, but when I have a decision to make, I look for information. I may look through emails, documents, photos, and files in multiple places. And if I'm lucky, I find what I'm looking for. So it's amazing to me that while I have trouble finding a single file, some organizations' success hinges on making sure that the right people can get all the right information they need when and where they need it. Like hospitals, insurers, banks, and all sorts of businesses. I don't know how they do it, but our friends at Highland do. Highland empowers more than half of 2020 Fortune 100 companies with tools that help make sure the right information gets to the right folks easily and automatically and makes business processes smarter and more efficient. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D dot com slash insights. You've been listening to Business X Factors created by our team at mission.org and brought to you by Highland. Are you enjoying the show? If so, I would be so grateful if you rated and reviewed us on Apple Podcast. This really helps ensure that more listeners like you find the show and lets me know how I'm doing. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to dive deeper into the topics discussed, be sure to check out the resources section of our show notes where we've included helpful links, articles, and books, including any stats or stories referenced in this episode. Thanks for listening. I'm Jeremy Bergeron, and I'll catch you next time on Business X Factors.